All right, I think we're close enough. I'm ready to get started. So welcome back to the Cisco U Theater. My name is Hank Preston, and I'll be delivering our talk today. Now, why exactly do we call this the Cisco U Theater? Cisco U is something that we're launching here at Cisco uh, at Learning and Certifications as a new way to help learners find the learning that is the most effective for you. One of the challenges I even personally have all the time is there's so many potential things to learn out there. Does anybody else feel overwhelmed by all of the potential stuff to look at? Do I watch this video? Do I read this blog? Do I do that lab? And so that's the idea behind Cisco U, is to try to find um, a way to use some technology, machine learning, artificial intelligence, to understand a little bit about each individual learner and customize, provide recommendations about what learning makes sense for you where you are right now, what topics are of interest, what learning have you done recently, what builds on what's there. And so that's the idea behind Cisco U, is to help every learner find the perfect path for them. Now, Cisco U is not live in production yet, but we do have open early access available. So if you haven't done so yet, I encourage everybody to scan this QR code. If you miss it on the screen, we've got it all over the place here in the booth. And that'll give you access, early access in. I believe Monday, everybody from Cisco Live that signs up for early access, uh, the following Monday will get access to Cisco U. And then until that we go live with general availabilities, which is sometime end of March-ish, you'll have full access through that point for all of the material that we've put into Cisco U so far. We have content on network automation, network fundamentals. Uh, I think there's some SD-WAN content in there. Tons of great material to take advantage of. So please take advantage of being here at Cisco Live and signing up for early access on there. You'll find lots of great material. All right, I see one more scan, Oop, another one. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and start the presentation, but as I mentioned, this QR code is all over the place on different uh, flyers and stands, so you can find it if you miss a chance here. But you all came to hear me talk about container networking in a session I like to call pulling back the curtain on container networking. Because one thing that I like to do as a technologist here at Cisco is find something that seems overly complicated and then figure out why it's really not as complicated as everybody seems to think it is. And container networking is definitely an area that falls into that bucket. Because containers um, are this black magic thing that a lot of people see out there. Exactly how does a container work? Um, I know it's Docker. We just do Docker start or Docker run and, and then things happen. Uh, is there really a network involved? There have to be, right? If we're talking from one service to another, there has to be something that's in there. And so I'm hoping to help everybody here understand a little bit about what goes on under the hood that Docker is doing for us. So we're going to start out with a very simple network here. This should, say, this should seem familiar to all of us if we've got a networking background. I've got a couple of hosts, C1, C2, C3. I've got a switch. I've got a router. I've got the external world that's out there. And my, uh, my individual hosts have cables that connect them to the switches, and there's ports. Right? This makes sense. We feel comfortable with this as a network because we've seen it for a long time. And what I'm going to show us is we're going to deconstruct how container networking works to realize that it's really just the same thing. It's just all happening inside of a Linux host. Right? We've done all of the same elements that are in there. There's just pieces that go through. And so we're going to walk through this type of a network because these Cs aren't VMs or servers. They're actually containers. And so let's see how we get the containers onto this network that's there. And so as I mentioned, this all starts and happens within a Linux host. And so what I've got here is a SSH window into my Linux host. Is that big enough for those in the back? Can you see the screen? Excellent. And so you can see I'm logged into my, uh, my workstation. It's a Linux VM. It's running Ubuntu. And if I go ahead and run Docker PS, we can see that I have three containers running, C1, C2, and C3. And so that's where our network is going to happen. It's all taking place inside of this Linux world. But all the pieces that we need are, are there. All right, so if we're in a Linux host, let's talk through all of the pieces that go into the network, starting with the routing side of it. Right? So networks are make it made up of layer one, layer two, layer three, and so on. We're going to start at layer three, the routing piece. And so you can see I've isolated here the router I'm just calling Linux networking. Because for years, and this isn't unique to containers with Linux, for years Linux has been able to route around. Um, not just Linux, Windows does this as well. If you've ever looked at a routing table on a host, you can see that it knows how to go from one interface to another. And so containers take advantage of that. And so we can see that we've got this function, which is just built into the Linux uh, networking stack, and it knows how to get out. 
And so I've represented the external interface, the Ethernet interface for my VM right here. It goes out, and it's one point off of my Linux router, and then I can see that I can come back in on the other side. So this part should be pretty easy, because I imagine many of us have looked at the routing tables on a host before. But we'll do that with context here. So I'll run IP route show. And so what we can see is I can see the routing table that's here. The command always makes me feel really happy when I run that command because it, it, makes, it brings me back to my networking roots. It's the exact same words I would run on a router from a Cisco router to look at the routing table. They're just in a slightly different order. So it's a nice place to start, right? It's calming. We've run IP route show, not show IP route, but it's close enough. And we can see some routes that are in place. I can see a default route. That's the default gateway for the host. I can see a few other routes are built in. We can see some local ones for the interfaces. And then I've got this route here, 172.17.00/16, which goes out through this interface called Docker 0. We'll dive into that as we go through. But this subnet represents all of the container networks that are, or the containers that are on there. That's where they live. And so the Linux networking stack, when it sees traffic for that, it knows it can route it out to the outside world. Or if traffic is inside of Linux and trying to get to one of the 172.17.00, it knows it just needs to send it out the Docker 0 interface. It can send it that way. Very basic, fundamental kind of routing capabilities that are there. Make sense? Excellent. So let's move along through our, or, uh, our information that's here. We'll move down from the routed layer to the switch layer. And so I've got here, I've renamed it Docker 0. And so we're going to say, I'm going to call it not a switch, I'm going to call it a bridge. Because inside of Linux, Linux refers to these as Linux bridges. Now, we're all network engineers. We know that switches and bridges are basically the same thing. So that shouldn't be earth shattering, right? So we're just going to refer to it as a bridge that's in the place. And so I can see that I've got a Linux bridge called Docker 0, and it has interfaces, right? And those interfaces eventually make our way down. We'll dive into that as we go forward. And these interfaces are identified not as like Ethernet 1 slash 1, but in this case, VETH B1, VETH O1, VETH 3A. They've just got names that are a little bit different, but they're just interfaces on a bridge, on a switch that are in place. Okay? So let's look at that inside of our demonstration machine. So I'm back on the terminal, and I'm going to run the command brctl show. So brctl show is the bridge control command, and I'm just showing. And so we can see our bridge name here is docker0. The bridge ID shows up. Look at that. Even spanning tree is possible inside of Linux. Now, it's disabled because we don't necessarily have to deal with, with bridge, uh, bridge loops and spanning tree as long as the, the, the switch inside isn't actually connected multipoint on the outside. In some types of Linux networking setups, you do need that, that configuration. And so you can enable spanning tree and have your Linux uh, network participate as part of spanning tree. And sure enough, I see three interfaces on my bridge. We'll see where those interfaces go as we go through. Now, that's the Linux view of it. But we're talking about container networking. We're talking about Docker. And so I can run Docker network list. And so I can see that I have three different Docker networks. Now, a Docker network is something that Docker itself is managing and controlling. But Docker, as great of a technology as it is, a lot of what it does is taking advantage of capabilities that Linux has had. It's like an abstraction layer over the top of what Linux offers to users anyway. And so I can see three networks. I can see a, a network called Bridge, a network called Host, and a network called None. These are the three default uh, networks that is, are set up whenever you install Docker on a system. You just get these three, and then you can create more if you want to. But we're keep, uh, keeping with the basics. The NUN network is fairly easy to understand. The idea here is this is uh, for containers that don't need any networking at all. They're only going to be independent. They're not going to talk to each other. That really doesn't sound that useful to me. We can't do much without a network. So fundamentally, what actually is done when we use a NUN network means there's something else that's going to handle all of the networking for Docker. So Docker isn't doing it itself. Something else is going to step in. A bit out of scope for today's presentation. That's more like Kubernetes stacks or very complex overlays. The host network is where we have, where Docker doesn't manage its own independent network. It just puts every container like it's a process on the existing host itself. 
So any interface that the VM or the Docker host has, they show up as available inside of the container. That, prevent, that removes any of the isolation that Docker usually has, but there are use cases where that's relevant. Bridge is where most of the time we're at and what we're talking about today. The bridge network is a switched network. It puts all of the containers on a switch, on a bridge, and allow them to talk to each other, provide paths outside of it. Now we started out with the bridge control command looking at the bridge from the Linux view. We can see it on the Docker site here. Let me show you how we can actually, I can prove to you that these two things, the, the Docker bridge and that Linux bridge that we saw actually are the same object. And so I can do a Docker network inspect and you'll, you'll uh, hopefully forgive me that I've got my cheat sheet for my commands so that I can remember what to type. Uh, colon jq dot zero dot options. Oh, and I didn't do it right. Docker network inspect. Oh, I got to give it the name. That's why I make the cheat sheet. And then I still make mistakes. There we go. All right, so the Docker network inspect command allows me to look at all the settings, the configuration for the Docker network that's there. I added this thing at the end, the JQ is jQuery. It's a way to look at and manipulate JSON data because that's what the Docker command comes through. There's a lot of configuration in that command. I'm only focused on a couple of inter uh, specific pieces under the options part. And what we want to look at here is com.docker.network.bridgename is docker zero. And so that, if we go back and I rerun, the BRCT show command, I know for the, those in the back might be hard to see, but Docker zero is the name, Docker zero again. So Docker has just created that Linux bridge for us to take advantage of it, that it's there. Now we wanna show that the actual containers that we're looking at actually exist on that Docker network. And so instead of options, it is containers. All right, I'm going to go back to copy and paste so that I don't make mistakes. There we go. So now I've used the same Docker network inspect. I'm just looking at the containers, and we can see my C1, C2, and C3 containers are attached to the bridge that's in there. So from Docker's view, the containers exist on this network that's in place. Now, bridges and switches deal with a certain part of the networking stack, MAC addresses. It's at the layer two. And so we can use brctl show max docker zero. And I can see that I've got actual MAC addresses that show up on, my, um, on the bridge that's there. So it's like looking at the MAC address table on a, on a switch. Now, right now, I see a handful of addresses. Those actually, if we look at the MAC addresses for my containers, So I've just used the same command. These are the MAC addresses assigned to the containers from Docker's point of view, and they don't show up. They don't show up because there hasn't been any traffic going on, so that all the MAC addresses kind of aged out like they would in a real network. So I'm gonna go ahead and generate some traffic. Docker attach C1. So what I've done is I've attached to one of the containers. So my prompt changed it. I'm now actually inside of the container on C1, and I'm just gonna go ahead and generate some traffic with the network engineer's favorite command, ping. All right, so I generated a little bit of traffic, and cute. I've switched back, so now I'm out, I'm back on the VM, and so when I look at, I'm gonna rerun a couple of commands, so first I want the MAC addresses, and then I want there. So now we can see, after sending some traffic, I have a new entry, 0242AC, and it's one of these, 02. So we can see here's the MAC address from Docker's perspective. We can see it's now been learned by the bridge that's in there, just like we would expect from any other network. We put something on, we sent some traffic. Hey, the MAC address was learned. Same concepts we've always had. Now the last piece we'll see here is I've seen from Docker, Doc, this is using like the Docker commands to say, hey, from your orchestration level, what are the MAC addresses? But if I go back in to the container, so I've switched back, I'm now inside of the container. I can do a IP link show. And so we can verify, I know I've scrolled past it a little bit, but here we can see the actual MAC address inside of it as well, as if we looked at it from a VM or a host that was out there. 
So containers have MAC addresses. They have interfaces as they go in. Okay, everybody with me still? All right, we've seen those pieces that are there. Now the next piece we want to go, so we've seen the switch, we've seen that we've got traffic, we see MAC addresses being learned. The next piece I want to talk about is this cable, right? Normally in a physical world, we would walk into a data center, a data closet, and we would take a patch cable, right? And we'd plug one end into a host, we'd plug another end into a switch, and then we allow traffic to go through. So how does that look inside of containers for container networking? So we need to do the, this bit of the discussion. And where that comes in is this type of an interface in Linux called a VE, a virtual ethernet. Um, virtual ethernet links in, in, inside of Linux are just like cables. And that's honestly how I envision them. A virtual ethernet link in Linux is a virtual cable. And like any cable, it has two ends. And so we can see in here, this black line represents the VE, and it has two links. It has link 97 and link 96 two sides to the VE. And every virtual ethernet interface inside of Linux is going to connect to two things. And anything that goes in one end comes out the other end, like a cable. And so VE sound weird. I didn't understand it at first. But then as I dug into it more, it's really, it's just a cable. I connect one VE to one part of a system, one container. And then the other one can be connected to my Docker Zero, my bridge. And now look at that. I've connected a container to a switch with a cable, same idea. So let's look at that again inside of Linux itself. So we'll start with that inside of the container, inside of the container. So I'm still in C1, and so I'm gonna use a similar command to what we had before, but I'm gonna change it up just a little bit. Link show. All right, make it a little wider. Just trying to get the, the screen wrap to be less annoying. There we go, that's better. All right, so IP. So I did IP link show. I just added a couple of flags. The dash C adds some coloring. It makes it a little easier to pick out pieces of the output. And dash D adds details. The specific detail I wanted to show was the type of interface. So here we can see the loopback interface is of a type link loopback. That makes sense. This interface here, which is called ETH0, is of type uh, VETH, right? VETH shows up in there. So it is a virtual ethernet. Now, as I mentioned, every virtual Ethernet actually has two ends. So one end is here. This is representing one end of the cable. So where's the other end, right? That's what we have to figure out. Now, the, the, the interface itself gives me hints about where to find the other end. Notice the ID number here is 46. So that's actually across the entire Linux system itself, right? Because a container is just running as a process on Linux. And so even though it's isolated, it still has some elements have to be unique. And so 46 identifies this specific interface for the container. Right here, at IF47, that tells me the other end of the virtual Ethernet. And so I just need to find IF47. Where's IF47? That'll tell us the other end of the link. So I can go through and I can say, okay, well, I'm going to jump out of the container. Okay, so I'm back onto the VM, and I'm going to go ahead and run... IP, I think I know, uh, yep, dash C, link, show, uh, type, V, ETH. All right, so very similar command to what I ran before inside the container. I don't want to lose the container output if I can avoid it. There we go. So what I've done now is IP, IP, dash C for the color, link, show, and I just said type, V, ETH, because the, the system itself has lots of interfaces, so I wanted to filter the output down. Just show me the virtual Ethernet. And so we had 46, and we're looking for at 50, or 47. Right there is 47. We can see it's got a name, VE, that goes through here. We can kind of close the loop. So the other side of it is at 46. So we go back up. So they link themselves back together. And that gives me the two ends of the cable that are there. VE 93352, yada, yada, yada. And then we can see we've also got a 49 and a 51. These represent the virtual Ethernet cables that connect to co uh, containers two and container three. It's just the other two that are there, okay? And then the last piece I wanna show is, okay, so we've got the two ends of the virtual Ethernet. We see this end is inside of the container. Where's this end, right? We see it on the VM, but where is it? And so we'll circle back to that brctl show command. And so we've got 47 up here. VE9335, take us back, here, 
I'll scroll just a little bit because I'm trying not to lose it all. So down here on Docker Zero, where we started, interfaces, VETH933. We can see that that, can, that other end of the, the virtual Ethernet cable is actually attached right to that switch, that bridge inside of Linux that goes through, showing us how we've got the container that has a MAC address. It uses the virtual Ethernet cable to connect to the switch, and then if it needs to route out, it has access to the Linux networking stack so that it can get where it needs to go. Okay, make sense? Excellent. All right. So uh, before we get to questions, so back to the drawing here. Now, in the, the 19 minutes that I've been talking so far, my goal here was to kind of start to introduce the concept of container networking and break them down into the components that make sense for us as network engineers to show you that it's really still just networking that happens in the container world. Now, there are more parts to container networking. There's all sorts of things that we do in the network space that also has to happen in the container world. We have to do things like firewalling and access rules. There's NAT, yeah, we can't get away from NAT even in containers. There's NAT that happens. So also in this Linux networking stack, there, all of those things happen. Linux knows how to do firewall rules and NATing. Generally that's handled by IP tables for containers. And Docker actually handles all the complexity of making sure IP tables is configured as needed to make that work. If I had another 20 minutes, we could dive into that and we could see firewall rules, we can see NAT statements, all those same things we're used to as network engineers happen in the container world. So the next time you're working in the container space, don't, you don't have to feel intimidated. Know that everything you know about networking is still very much relevant, and it doesn't matter if it's Docker independent like this on one host, or if it's using Kubernetes or some other orchestrator. All right, with that, we've got a couple of, uh, we got about a minute and a half here if anybody has any specific questions on, on some of the pieces we've gone through. Up here? Yeah, so the question was, what happens if this host has a second physical interface? Um, almost anything you'd want could potentially happen. So it would be likely, it would just show up as another link here. If it has its own independent IP address, then it may be showing there, and then it could connect in. And then the routing table would have multiple routes. Um, I, likely you're not doing dynamic routing protocols inside of Linux networking, though you can. And so you might have static routes to send traffic in different directions. Though the IP address association to a link doesn't have to be tied directly to a physical. Often when I've got multiple interfaces, I might actually connect those into a port channel. And so the IP address kind of funnels out for redundancy. But just like we can do anything we want with multiple IP interfaces on a router, you can treat Linux the same way. Mm -hmm. Okay, time for one more, yes. Yep, great question. So the question was, traffic from C1 to C2, does it go to the Linux networking layer or does it stay there? Well, let's use our networking knowledge. If these have, and I've got the IPs listed, 172, 17, 2, and 3, we know it's a slash 16, so it's the same network. So in the real world, if this would hit the switch and it would move over and go down. The same exact thing will happen within the Linux side. If it hits, the, the Docker Zero acts just like a switch, acts like a bridge. It's got the MAC addresses in there because the packet, when it actually goes through, it's going to be destined for a MAC address because it doesn't need to be routed. And so it'll just get forwarded like any other frame through a switch. Yeah, so the question is, is there no firewall possible between the two of these? With the default Docker networking like this using just Linux bridging, no. Um, if you need to put some firewalls in there, you add in IP rules and all sorts of statements with IP, uh, IP tables. Oftentimes that results in actually having, you'd have these on separate networks so that you can funnel them through a networking layer. There are a variety of ways to tackle security and segmentation for containers. Oftentimes that's where you may have heard of uh, CNI plugins, container network interface plugins. Those are, that's a lot of the value that brings when you move into one of those, because then you might be able to get layer two level segmentation. ACI as an example can do that. So if you use ACI to handle your container networking, it can use all the ACI segmentation kind of buried within because we put an open V switch directly in there to replace this Docker Zero switch. All right, um, I'm gonna have close it down. Happy to answer questions after the session's done, but thank you all for joining. We did do a raffle, so hopefully everybody got some tickets. We are raffling off, it looks like a Fire TV stick. All right, I'm gonna go for this one right here. Uh, number 23, who's number 23? 
Anybody? Oh, back there. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. I know that's why you're all staying. You were hoping you won the raffle. All right. If you have any more questions on this, like I said, I'll stick around for a little bit. Take care.